so as we think of getting involved with something like this, say, you mm-hmm. know, in this particular, okay, let's use this, this case in missions, there's this, um, there's the real danger of it coming across as here's the great Americans or the Westerners or the white people coming in and, and fixing all the problems and giving out all the, the resources and things. Um, this taint of colonialism, yeah. I think is a, is a good way of saying it. And it's, you know, well, we've, we've both been involved in different ministry things for a while. And that's something that I, you know, I feel like I'm pretty allergic to that because I've seen that happen in some places and it, it really leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Um, how how would you say this is a little different than that? Because I, I want to make sure when people hear this, they're not just like, oh, yeah, you know, here's two white guys just saying how they're going to mm-hmm. fix everything and send Bibles to these people who need them. I, 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 yeah, I think I think you have something to say on that. Like, how is this different than that? So this particular organization we were working with, a Training to Send, mm-hmm. and I'm going to put a big plug in for them. The way they are handling the relationship cross-cultural, the indigenous leadership, and how they're doing that, I was really impressed. I came back. I I told the, I don't know, sure what his title was, Joe Fleming. I told him. I said, "What you're doing here, I I am 100% in support of." Like I saw them come alongside their local leadership, and just bless them. Mm. And then also they were. They were supporting them in, in a way like not not a paternalistic method. Like they were not just over them. They were coming in behind them and supporting them from behind. Mm. Like a lot of the local leadership was doing the work and mm-hmm. doing the leading in it. They were casting vision. They were going out and starting new groups. And so I was really excited about that. Mm. But now to answer your question, like then what I saw for us is we can supply them with what they really need is something they are really not going to be able to raise enough of funds to go buy a container load of Bibles at a reasonable cost. Mm-hmm. And it's really the only way you're going to get them at a reasonable sum. And so they they simply were not going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And so for us to come along and say, here, we can help with that piece. We'll never duplicate what they're doing mm-hmm. on the ground. Like it was just, it was phenomenal and what they're doing with the church and the way the church was growing. But here we can come along and supply what they really need. And mm. I, that really, that to me felt different. Hmm. And I, hopefully that answers your question. It, yeah, it does. And that, that was a lot of the sense I got while I was there. As a partnership. Yeah. Is what it, it was. Because we'd go to do these different churches, you know, and you'd, you know, maybe be speaking about, hey, you know, here's these Bibles. But it was, it was a strong sense of, this is a partnership all across the body of Christ. So for example, okay, there were a bunch of people in America, hey, that helped get funds. And then other people helped figure out the logistics. Then they were printed, well, I think in India, right? Yep. You know, shipped all the way over and brought into uh, Senegal. So different church, you know, group or a different group got them, you know, put them on a truck, drove them all the way. Like you had all these different elements of Christ's body working together, all those pieces to mm-hmm. get that box to with whatever that, church may be to where the pastor himself can okay give yeah. them to the members of his church and i thought uh, that that struck me as as i wish it wouldn't have surprised me as much as it did but it feels like in in a lot of things that i've been involved with that feels pretty rare it, yeah. I, I don't it would have been interesting i don't know if it'd be possible but to try to figure out how many different church groups or churches or pastors, whatever, were involved in the whole process from start to finish. Yeah. But it would be a lot across many countries. And sure, um, you know, you guys as an organization brought a, a critical component, but by no means the only component. Like no. you, you couldn't have done it by yourselves. Is that a fair And the assessment? distribution wouldn't have happened mm-hmm. correctly either without what they were doing there on the ground. Mm-hmm. Like the, those two pastors and, and the people that they represented, there was a lot of people with them as well. Mm. Like there's no way we could have distributed them effectively. So we went to a few churches and we handed some out, but it was like, you know, this is not efficient. This is not a good way to do it. I mean, this looks good for for the moment, but and it feels good, but it really it's, is not the way to do it. So is this maybe, um, I guess, us putting out encouragement that uh, this partnership all across the body of Christ, all around the globe, whatever that may look like, feels like that is the critical component mm-hmm. instead of kind of like my original question, it's not the big Americans with all the money coming in and just 
you know, like, well, we can, we can fix that. You know, yeah. how, how, what's the, give me, you know, what's, how big a check do we need to raise? You know, it, it felt very different than that. And I think that was one of the reasons I got excited because I, I would think everybody listening to this can get very excited about getting the Bible to as many people as possible around the world, right? That just mm. seems like something we would all agree on and be happy uh, to, to be a part of. But it gets really messy depending on how it's done. Yeah. Um, I think that's the piece that I want to make sure is clear, you know, that um, I think we all deeply care about God's word and getting it to, to everybody who wants it. Um, how we do it may be a bit of a challenge and difficult. Yeah. And that's where the whole, how do we avoid you know, coming across as the big Western saviors that are going to take care of everything. And it's like, oh, I don't think we want to be like that. So, yeah. And that's the part where I'm saying it takes a lot of patience because you have mm -hmm. to go in, you have to find the structure that exists and how we can partner with it. Mm. We were able to do some of that with Malawi. And there, there's pastor fraternities. There's these groups of pastors in local areas, like kind of village pastors get together. And some of them are registered. There's like an umbrella organization. And they do a bit of holding each other accountable. So we found a way to actually distribute and send them two or three boxes or however many boxes they would get. And they would take them and distribute them among themselves where the mm. need was. Mm. And so that was a way to hold accountability in that regard. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, it's actually a means, like we have to get there and we have to find out from the local leadership where are the needs and what's the best way to do this. And they usually know. And sometimes it, it takes a while. It takes a bit of conversation. In this case, Training to Send already had that for us. Mm -hmm. They already knew it. And they're like, yeah, here we go. This is mm -hmm. what we need. Yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty powerful. And I think, again, that's just so neat to see the the church of Christ all uh, across however many different countries and communities coming together mm -hmm. around something like mm -hmm. this. I think that's, that's, that's pretty neat. You know, yeah. I'd like to see more of that.